Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today's guest is a former Britain's Strongest Man, World's Strongest Man competitor, and a UFC fighter, the awesome Ollie Thompson. How are you doing, buddy? Very well. It's great to be here, Loss. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on, mate. Um, for those that don't know, Ollie was pretty much the man when I started off in the UK. You were you were the top British guy. You won Britain's Strongest Man in 2006. And I think I, I just started training at that time. I just started, just um, 2005, I started training for Strongman. And you were the man. I mean, Terry Hollands, obviously, and Mark Felix as well were, were, were definitely up there. But you were the champ. You were extremely statically strong. I mean, just quickly, for anyone that doesn't know Ollie, you were a 400-plus kilo deadlifter, 410, I think, did you do? Yeah, 410 was the max I did um, near the end. Yeah, you were up at like the 290 mark, sorry, 190 mark on the log lift, um, at yeah. which back then was was absolutely world class. Yeah, um, all, all the lifts that I, I did were certainly stood stood in a good position for the time when they were done as well, and um, and, and even even for the for the time after that, um, I definitely uh, was was at a good point when I when I stopped, if you like. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a long wasn't a long run, but it was uh, definitely it went, went to a good level. So you you were uh, an IFSA pro. Tell us about the the because um, they like you say they they had the the gold, silver, and bronze system. Tell us about that. Yeah, the the basic concept was that they were going to give us a wage, so uh, a monthly wage, regardless of how much you compete. I'm um, not a massive amount, but obviously the gold has got more, the silver has got a little bit less, and the bronzes, and we were in the bronzes, and that was appropriate for the time as well. Um, which sounds great, obviously, as a strong man, certainly back then as well. You know, I, I don't, I'm not too much in touch with the finances in strong man, but back then, certainly, it, you know, we, were, we weren't all making lots of money. So a, a bit of regular money was, was, was great, especially if you got injured. And, you know, in strong man as well, it's, 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 all, it's all results based. So if you didn't finish where you need to finish, the money nece- it wasn't necessarily very good. So it was nice to have a consistent amount of money. I can't remember the amounts. So it was probably quite a, you know, you know how it is. It was, probably wasn't amazing, but to get something was was great. And it was certainly uh, the guys that didn't get one. Well, sure, certainly at the time were were quite uh, were quite envious. Um, so the IFSA concept was basically they were going to use standardizers a lot of the time. The stainless steel equipment that you see sometimes now still. And um, I, looking back, I don't think it was a great idea. And, and the reason I say that say that is I think. The more I'm, I become a fan and not a competitor myself, so I see it from a different standpoint. And the strongman appeal is, I think, I think the variety and how, how, how big things look, how heavy they look. When it's all standardised, it's more of a powerlifting sort of environment as far as it, it, it's, not, it's about the numbers as opposed to the look. The strongman, is, for me, is supposed to look a certain way. You, know, you pull a train, you pull a boat, you lift huge lumps. And I think the standardised events didn't really do that justice. Yeah, I mean, I I remember I've done some comps in the past where, and I think it's about getting the right balance. You need it to be heavy, obviously, and challenging, and, and it needs to be impressive, but it needs to look visually impressive as well. And yeah. I've done certain comps where I had really heavy farmer's walk implements, but they were just tiny blocks. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. And it, pe- people watching from the side like just couldn't appreciate how heavy they were. Whereas when they, they, they look huge, you see at World's Strongest Man, they have the really long wooden kind of rogue farmer's walks or yeah. you see people carrying fridges down on yokes and stuff like that. It just, it, it's a lot more visually appealing and people can, you know, every, everyone's tried to move a fridge when they, yeah, they're yeah. moving house or something like that. You, you appreciate these it's things relatable. aren't... It's relatable to regular people. Exactly. And I think that that is, I mean, we do have a lot more people now that train and understand how heavy 400 kilos is. But for the general public that are watching, it, it always needs to remain entertaining and, and visually impressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as, as you know, this, the strongman, can be, we kind of border that line between sports and entertainment as far as we, we're never quite fully a sport, but we're, not, but we're still we're, we're still athletes and sports sports people ourselves. We see ourselves that way, but, but we have to accept as well that, that we're not visually always seen in that way, and that's fine as long as people are watching. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm very much like yourself. My sort of my philosophies of the sport and and the kind of way I see it changed as I got older because. When you're younger, you just think about, I want to lift the most. I want to be the strongest man. But without that entertainment side, strongman dies. And it's, you know, it's characters like, you know, Eddie Hall, for instance. He, he really has helped the sport grow. Um, guys like Hafthor, you know, they're, they're, they're big characters. And there's a load of others as well. I mean, you know, 
Terry Hollands, myself, Felix in, in the British side of things, yourself, um, Eddie Elwoods, he was a, another great character, Darren Sadler, just, just on the, the, the British side. Then there's plenty across the pond. I mean, some of the American guys, they go down that sort of WWE route and try and really yeah. entertain the crowds. And they're the ones that are remembered, not necessarily that there's other athletes that are extremely good and you'll know the guys, but for, for a lot of fans, they, they, they were, they see the, the memorable people rather than people that always just win in contests. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, touching on what you just said as well is what I've, what I've actually really enjoyed recently in recent times, for example, you've had the, the, the a bit more emotion to the com- com- competitors. And what I mean by that is, for example, you mentioned Eddie and four and the kind of having it as a bit of a rivalry and, and you've actually, you know, we're, as you, as you know, we're all really friendly, we're all really friendly to each other. We all really support yeah. each other. And, um, and, and that's, that's amazing in its own right. But, but I love the fact that we can touch on a bit of uh, emotion, a bit of sensitivity as well, because because it really makes it it makes it again it's more relatable to people as well, because it, they can see well, although we're having fun, they can see this this is this is real this is real this is a real deal this is this is big business for us as well you know. Well, for the for those two, it is big business, and uh, you know they're, yeah, yeah. they're they've gone to the extreme. Whereas, like you say, mo- most of the guys they do get on pretty well. I mean, you're always going to have clashes of personality. That's just natural in any sport. Um, but th- those two, unfortunately, they, they genuinely don't like each other. But that, that's another story. And we'll talk a little bit about the fighting side, because obviously you've got yeah, yeah. an incredible career you went on to have in, in um, mixed martial arts. But I just want to uh, focus on your sort of strongman career first. Sure. To, to, for, for people that don't know, let's just run through. Where you, when did you start training in the gym? Like, what age were you? Can, you? can you remember your first kind of experiences yeah. lifting weights or, or where, so what motivated you? I'd, I'd always done, done many different sports and stuff, and without sort of going too over the top on that, I'd, I'd, I'd always I'd always found a way of being successful, successful and quite good at what most of them I did, as I'm sure a lot of good athletes do. And um, so, I, it, you know, part part of wanting to compete is, I, I don't know, probably for you as well, probably for probably for everybody to a certain extent is, you know, we're we're, build, we're building up our own our own, uh, we're feeding ourselves a certain thing we need, a certain desire we have, whether it's build our self-esteem, building up, building up your own value of what, what, you're, what you're capable of and who you are. And uh, we use competition and training to, to sort of fill that gap and to, and to, to grow, if you like. Is that, yeah, it's, that make it? it's quite interesting because most of us that compete, not just strongman, but I mean, you've gone on to do other things and most of us have been very competitive in other sports as well. It's not like we're, we're just good at one thing. You find, you, you eventually find what you really, really like. But, we're all good athletes that can adapt to to whatever we want to focus on, and it, it is strange sometimes because people will look at strong men and go, "Oh, that you're big and slow," and you know it's quite the opposite. You know, I was a really good sprinter as a kid. I know you're yeah, yeah. you're a great athlete, and there's I, I could go through a handful of of other guys that have competed at high level in, in other sports. It's just finding what you enjoy and then focusing that training specifically. Obviously, your physique now is very different to when you were competing in strongman. I mean, you you were up at about 22, 23 stone at your biggest. I think I went to one hundred and forty six, maybe seven kilos. Okay. Well, I struggled to get any heavier. My body sort of plateaued you, out. You, you were lean, you know, at that weight. You were yeah. In, 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 in relation to the to, to, to the guys, you know, I was fairly lean. But it's, it's not it's not so heavy anymore, is it? It's not so heavy now. Not now. There's there's guys a lot bigger than that now. <laughs> but I mean, then yeah, so, and I, so, I, I remember, <laughs> I vividly remember seeing you in a comp, thinking that guy's arms are huge. <laughs> you, you just had massive guns. Yeah, I think I probably was there, actually, like, poking them and touching them. But <laughs> believe it or not, that was just good fortune. They were just there. They were just there. They were just there. They still they still look like you got some big arms on you. They're not but, too bad. They're not too bad. They just get in the way now. <laughs> but um, I mean, what what weight are you now when you're, you're fighting? Uh, the last fight I had just this previous weekend just gone by in Poland. I weighed in at 111, fully, fully close, maybe 110. Yeah. So it's my, a, it's in a... my fight, my fight career, I've I've kind of gone up and down. I've actually dropped down to 93 once as well, which is horrible. I bet. And never again, never again. <laughs> that must have been a hell of a cut for you. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. But you know, and again, it's probably relatable for someone like yourself. Is when when someone said you you'll never make 93, that was it. I was making 93. <laughs> It's that it's that challenge, isn't it? Yeah, and, I, and you know what? I hated every minute of it, and I want to do it again. <laughs> Brilliant, I love it. Anyway, back to your your strong man. Let's let's focus on that first. Well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, we can. Well, of... you, know, you did ask me. You did ask me, but I, I didn't. I know, no, no, no. It's great, mate. Yeah. I love it. 
so, I do. Sorry, on, maybe maybe twenty one, twenty two. Yep. Oh, you just broken up. Show mate. off. Sorry, mate. How's that doing? Cool. I'll just wait till the signal comes back. We'll get Liz. No problem. Right? My my internet connection is bad tonight. Not good at the moment. No. Can you hear me okay now? I can hear you, mate. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. We'll go go now. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so basically, I've got, I've got I've been in the gym a few times over the years because I was quite a strong kid, just showing off maybe in the college, going the leg press and max it out just to show everyone you can do it. Um, I think it was impressive at the time. But I actually got into the gym about I think maybe 12, I'm going to say 21, maybe 22. Uh, no, 21, 21. Um, basically, I was I was I was living at my mom's house and I didn't have a job and basically just I wanted to just make out I was doing something in the day so I wasn't I didn't get moaned that pretty much <laughs> so um, I thought you know what I'm gonna go to the gym so I went to the gym I started I started at the gym and basically everyone in the gym was, it was a gym that loved, they love strongman man but believe it or not I didn't even know what strongman was really I'd sort of heard, heard of Jeff Cates being the world's strongest man but I didn't I've never really seen it I'm never really aware of it um but but I went in the gym and when, when, when a big, strong kid comes in the gym, and it, it's like a big, you probably know yourself if you're in the gym and some 18-year-old lad comes in and you're like, wow, look uh, at that, and you're like, that. Jesus, this kid's got something. Yeah, yeah. So everyone was excited and got, got me do, within a couple of weeks, got me doing some different funky stuff like a log lift and a deadlift. Like, yeah. I can't remember what, I mean, on the deadlift, they had a strongman competition. They all love strongman. So the, the guys in the gym, and they had a strongman competition, the local one, a bit like the one you did down in Bexley at that time, but an earlier version of it, a bit more primitive version of it. And they had a log lift and a deadlift for Max. And uh, they signed me up. They said, can you do, do some deadlifts? I said, I've never done deadlifts before. And we did some deadlifts and stuff, and I think we went up to like maybe 260. Just disgusting technique and just, just brutal. Br brutal. But <laughs> it's a deadlift, right? That's the beauty of it. It, it goes up. And uh, I don't know, a lot of us are lovely, maybe like 120, 125, maybe something like this, which, um, you know, it doesn't seem significant. But as you know, when you first in the gym, it's this, yeah. this bloody decent weight. It's a decent it weight. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, I think sometimes we get a bit ahead of ourselves what we think is is, is, is good. Because, I mean, when you're competing at the top level in a sport, your level is is up there. So, you know, I, I say to people all the time, a 200 kilo deadlift is good. You know, when, yeah, when yeah. people... See the likes of the four or five hundred kilos. That's just ridiculous, you know. It's, yeah, for sure, for sure. But, the average person walks into the gym and doesn't, doesn't do them sorts of numbers. So, no. so every, every, everyone sort of everyone really loved it, and I, and I was just just enjoying a bit of attention, to be honest, a bit of a, a bit of positive energy around me. Everyone was like, "You're you're, you're doing amazing," and you know how it is, and you you just appreciate that that that, that energy and the and the compliments. It makes you feel good, especially when you're 21. You're not you haven't got a job. You don't really know what you're doing with your life. It's, it's great. It, it really gives you a purpose. So I carried on training. I trained, trained, I trained hard, you know, very hard, really hard. Well, I've had a um, few training sessions with you in the past, mate. I know you train hard. <laughs> always, always good sessions, always good sessions. But even as, even as a, even if it's younger than that, I didn't know what I was doing. Because, you know, these days everyone's spoiled with the access to, to the internet, to the information and knowledge. Even when, and obviously you came in a little bit after me, but even then, there wasn't the information we have, we have now. To, no. So you have to kind of try a trial and error, don't you? Um, so we try things out and we find our own way, figure out our own ways of doing it. So basically, every, everyone in the gym after that competition was all like, uh, oh, you, you know, keep keep at it. And I was like, yeah, I will. And they all, they all they all been talking about wanting to do these UK Strongest Man qualifiers, Britain Strongest Man qualifiers. And it seemed like it was like almost like their dream to do them. But they were never doing them. Yeah. And I was, I thought, you know what, this, this, that's just not my nature. I said, well, put my name down. I'll, I'll go and do it now. Because it's just an arrogant, cocky idiot. Basically. <laughs> um, so I did. I put my name down for UK Strongest Man Qualifier. I think it was in Gravesend. Yeah. Um, and we all went down. And I, I did it. Um, Jeff Capes was the referee. And uh, I didn't do very well. I didn't do very well at all. And uh, I got beaten up, beaten by some people. I don't even know who they are now, to be honest. But they didn't, didn't like, become big names and stuff. But, but, but you, you come away from that first competition and you know if you want it or not. You know, if you want to, yeah. And uh, I decided, I, I decided, you know what? Next year, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be relevant. And the year after that, and I made a plan. <laughs> Believe it or not, Loz, I, I actually made a plan of where I, where I was gonna be each year from that point onwards. And my my plan was that the, the, the year after, I was gonna qualify for British Strongest Man. The year after that, I was in the final. And the year after that, I was on the podium. And after that, I wanted to try and win it every single time. That was my, that was my vision. And, it's uh, quite it's quite funny listening to you because I was exactly the same, like yeah. exactly the same. I sort of like right, 
I want to make the, you know, qualify this year, get top five, podium, win it. And then I just want to dominate. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that, was, that was the plan. <laughs> after that, no plan is, after that, just stay there. Just yeah. Staying there can be the hardest part, I guess, is probably the hardest thing you can do. Yes, it is. So we fast forward, and uh, uh, 2002 was the time I did the qualifier. Didn't, didn't qualify. 2003, I realised that the British strongest man qualifier was a bigger competition out of the two, like the UKs and Britons. Yeah. So I was still learning about about the fit, about about how it works. So 2003, I what, did did the Britain's strongest man qualifier, and I qualified for Britain's strongest man. That's right, I qualified for Britain's strongest man. But I did. I didn't have any kit at all. No one in the south had kit. No one in the south was any even strong. We were like a laughing stock back then in the south. It was all up north, wasn't it? The top guys then. Yeah, it was. The, like, the Midlands had a, had a handful. The north had a load. And the south, we were just, the south. We were like at the time. We were like whales at the time. You know? <laughs> I'm not saying now there's some good guys now. <laughs> but at the some time, guys. yeah. You no, know, yeah, I'm not, no, no, no discredit. But at the time, that was how we were looked at. The South and Wales, we were like irrelevant. We were just um, <laughs> making up numbers, you know. If you, have, if you had, a, had a, a Welsh guy and a Southern guy in your group, you were good to go. <laughs> you were good to go. So that just made me hungry. That made me, more, that made me really hungry. Yeah. So we, I, I qualified without any kit. And uh, that was my goal. And, and went to British Strongest Man and got smashed. Got smashed. Came uh, maybe second last in my group. And um, probably didn't, start, didn't stand out at all. I, I, doubt, I doubt anyone in that, in that, in that competition or certainly in that group thought, oh, watch out for this guy. But I, I was quite young, <laughs> quite young at the time. You know, we, we, it's changed a bit now. Back then, you, you were quite older. You were older when you got to, your, got to your sort of peak and stuff. So there wasn't many young guys. So me and Darren Sadler, for example, we were like youngsters. We were like youngsters in, 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 the, in the field of older guys. Yeah. So 2003, we, we got, to the, got to the bridge on which now, which was my goal. So 2004, my goal was to uh, make, the, make the final. So 2004, we came back and uh, I was on good form, really, really, really good form. Not, not like world champion form, but good form, you know, it was all getting better. Get a bit more equipment, some farmer's walks. Um, not much else. <laughs> Some well, I, I, good. It's good funny. Enough. I remember watching the 2004 quite vividly. That was one of the shows that made me want to start doing strongman. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'll let you well, tell the story, but I just I thought I, it was well, like guys like yourself, Mark Felix, um, Eddie Elwoods. Yeah, I think that might be Mark's first year in British Strongest Man as well. 2004. I think me, me and Mark maybe our first year doing doing reasonably well. Yeah. And uh, so. 2004, no one really considered me to be any sort of threat to any, anybody. And, I, and I, in my group, I had, uh, I had, I think I had Bill Pitt and Eddie Elwood in my group. And they were two friends of mine who I travelled to train with quite a bit previously. So we were sort of like quite tight between, between them people now. Well, actually, I'm not so much Eddie, Eddie yet. Not by that point, Eddie, sorry. Bill Pitt, but Bill, Bill was a good friend of mine. Bill, Adam Townsend, they were sort of my guys in Northampton because it was accessible a few hours from where I live. Yeah. Because we didn't have equipment, they they did. So we used to go to Russ Bradley's as well, Area Fifty One, Russ Bradley's. Yeah, that, was, place. Um, that was the place back then, wasn't it? That was, it was the, yeah. That was the, that's the nearest place to me to go, and it's like three or four hours that's away. Like so. Worc Worcester area, isn't it? Worcester, yeah. yeah. That's not too bad. Not too bad for you, right? It's no, it's, it's, it's a lot closer. It actually had closed down by the time I started training, but um, I've heard yeah, lots yeah. about it. Yeah, it was quite. It was, it was cool back in the day. So basically, two people went through it. And I, I knew me, Eddie, and Bill were there, so I knew. I knew that. Um, I had a lot of respect for these guys, but I, I knew I was going to send one of them home. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, I was set, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to the cause. And um, it ended up being Bill, but Bill went home, unfortunately. It was um, just the timing of it. Eddie was a bit fresh, fresher than Bill. Bill been in the competition a bit longer, longer. I was obviously young still. And basically, long story short, I got to the final and I was leading the final up to two events left. I was leading and no, no one liked that at all. Everyone was very unhappy about this. It wasn't <laughs> disturbing the order, you know? Yes. You know how it is in Strongman. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. order. <laughs> and you disturb it initially. Basically, I find you don't necessarily get too much respect. You have to sort of bash the door down. And when you bash it down, you get respect. Yeah. They don't open it for you. They don't welcome you in. You you, oh, you, no, you, no. You've got, you got, you got to, especially back then, you really had to earn your respect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so I was event. I had, I think, two events left, and they were the yoke and the stones. Two things I didn't have to train with. And I was like, this is going to be a problem. And uh, the yoke, I fluffed it up. It's, for me, the yoke is if you don't train with one, it's hard. You need to get used to that balance, that movement, how you move with it, that stability. 
and it, if you don't, it's messy, isn't it? One step, two steps, swing. You know yeah, how if, it is. if you start swinging around, you, you, you're you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the stones. Now, it was, back then, people didn't do five stones really. Like, one guy did five stones. He was amazing. Yeah. I think I did in the final. I did three stones. So I ended up finishing third. And um, that was still amazing. I was still really happy. A podium finish. Not huge progress on the year before. Yeah, and I was a year ahead of my schedule. My little secret schedule I had was a year, was a year <laughs> ahead. So I was like, I got a year to spare now. Yeah, yeah. I got a spare year. <laughs> So every, every year, five guys have been going to World Strongest Man. So I was like, wow, I'm going to World Strongest Man. Yeah. This is amazing. This is amazing. But then last minute, they changed it, and only two guys went. Yeah. I think it was A. Bronson and Rich, Rich, Rich Gosling went. Yes. Yeah. Rich, Rich won, didn't he? He won the British. Yes. Rich came through and won. Rich, Rich, Rich had, a, had a, for a few years had a real, real knack of being in the right place at the right time. And I, this, is, this is credit to him. This isn't, this isn't discredit. This isn't, no, he... He, and he found the way, and he was—he was a winner. He was a winner, and it was real. He, he never expected him to do what he did, but he did. He found the way, and I, I like that. I like that a yeah. lot. Um, so basically, I didn't get a spot at um, World Strongest Man, so I was really disappointed in. So I basically went out of my way, and I, I called—I think Dougie. Dougie Evans was running all the time. Yeah, he's running all the time. And I said, "Look, I want to do an international competition. I'm ready." Um, and he said, well, there's no, there's none, there's none at the moment, but we'll sort something out, you know, fob me off. So then I put the phone down. I thought, no, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. It's because I was hungry. I was hungry. You know how, especially when we start out, we, we, we want it. So I went back and called him back. I said, look, what's the next, what's the next international competition? And he said, oh, Super Series to Moscow. It's full up. It's full up. I said, all right, well, if, it won't be full up. I'll pay my own flight, my own hotel. Send me out there. And I went out there. And I didn't do that well because it's another level as well, you know, yeah, back then yeah. as well. Back then as well. The, the Brits do quite well now, you know. We didn't do so well back then. It was, it was difficult. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I think that really, I think that, that 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 attitude of doing something like that sort of set me up quite well. I think I think it's a great attitude to have, just to show how keen you were and to pay your own way to get there. You know, you you got yourself seen, which was you know that was probably the start of you getting a lot more invites. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And and actually, funny enough, that was. Um, that was at, the, at in Moscow. We, I competed against uh, Zadrunas was there, Marius was there, and um, this was actually a good competition. It was really eye opener to see see these guys. I remember it was a two, it was a two day competition, and Mar and uh, Zadrunas had got there and cleaned up the first day. Marius had been doing a doing a three day competition in Poland the last three days before he got there, because this guy's a stranger, right? Yeah. Still man stand this guy was a, 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 straight, a different different kettle of fish. Yeah. And he got there, and the first day he was tired. He was tired, so he he didn't have a good first day. And the second day, in between days at, at dinner, he said, uh, "It's okay, it's okay. I, I tired, I tired. I have good sleep tonight. Tomorrow, tomorrow I do good." <laughs> and he he came back and he won by a point. Jeez. He, he won by a point. Um, he 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 used to compete all the time. Yeah, I, and I tough mean, competitions. I mean, I, I did a few of his shows in Poland, and they'd be like eight or ten events in one day yeah he broke you down he broke, he broke he broke you down one way or another you were just battered you, you just had nothing left by the end of it you know you know what without going too far off off trail i think that guy is possibly not getting enough recognition these days for what he was um because he changed the game he changed the game you know whether you love him or hate him personally he changed the game Oh, he took it to another level. There's no doubt about it. His his attitude, his drive, his kind of like determination during competitions was second to none. Just the way he would push himself. He wouldn't he wouldn't get into the lead and then cruise. He would still just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, just trying to better himself all the time. Yeah, yeah. And and he and he didn't need the thing we all enjoy, the sort of camaraderie we all have, he didn't need it. No. He was he 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 didn't he he didn't he, he he was he was operating on a different sort of on a different frequency at some times. Mm. Even though he, he, he was an ass, <laughs> he's an absolute ass, and, 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 and a lot of champions can be like that. Um, yes, you're, you don't have to be, but a lot of them will be like. We, we could name many sports with people in the same. Yeah, sport. yeah, of course you can. So let's see. And uh, well, I remember, I remember I uh, this after party in, in Moscow. Uh, he said, uh, "Hi, uh, hi, uh, you, you're Oli. How, how old are you?" I said, oh, "I'm twenty." 24, whatever it was. He goes, ah, I won World Strongest Man 23. 
<laughs> he was a bastard like that, wasn't he? <laughs> nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. Yeah. No, that is very much Marius, to be fair. He wasn't a people's person, but he was a damn good strong man. <laughs> oh, man, yes. So, so I, think, I, think, I think he's a little... Uh, why do, why do you think he's why do you think he's maybe spoken down a little bit more details? Why do you think that is? I I mean I have a lot of respect for Marius. I I always got on pretty well with him to be honest. He um he invited me to a lot of his shows, looked after me out in Poland. But I think for a long time he was seen as the best in the world where he won a few easy world strongest man titles. And not, you know, that's a that's a harsh thing to say because there's no easy titles. But uh, the, the best guys, as you know, split and went off to, to IFSA, whereas Zadrunas won two world titles and Verastyuk won a world title. And at that time, those two, along with maybe Kuklaev, were the top three guys in the world, along with Pudzianowski. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess because they weren't competing against each other, the four of them, some people maybe maybe put uh, kind of put him down a little bit i mean you can't put him down he was an incredible strong man five times world's strongest man and in 2002 and 2003 he was without question the best in the world you can't mm. argue that fact because everyone was competing against each other and he was the man but i think the sport evolved a little bit from there it got a lot heavier the you know and then the guys like zadrunas um, Verastia, they started taking the level up even higher in terms of what was humanly possible. Whereas Marius was an extremely gifted athlete. He wasn't quite as strong as those guys when it came to the, the pure strength type of event. I hear, I hear, I hear. I mean, first, I mean, before I say anything else, first of all, Vasil and Zadrinus, they're my guys as well. So um, it's no, I just, I just, I just try and retain the ability to not have to not like this you because I like you. Um, oh and, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, so sometimes we get caught up in that kind of. We well, do. I like the Druners, so Marius ain't no good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've always tried to look at people for their ability. So, I mean, people criticise me. I did a, a top ten world strongest man winners list, and I think I, swear, I have yeah, like I, I have like um, uh, John Paul Sigmundson lower down in my top ten. And people are, oh, you can't have him low down. He was like such a character, blah, blah, blah. I don't take character or personality into my rating. It's Not based sure. on who I believe is the best. Yeah. And I, I believe Zadrunas is the greatest strong man of all time. I've gone into many reasons why in the past. I believe Brian mm -hmm. Shaw is probably the second best. Maybe okay. you could argue that Thor is up in those top three these days. But mm -hmm. I, I, you have to have Marius in, in, in the top sort of four or five because... Mm -hmm. He was such a dominant force. He won so many titles. He was he, he is the, the the highest winner of World's Strongest Man at five titles. But then yeah. you've got Zadrunas, who won six world champ he won two world championships and four world strongest man titles. Um and obviously he was dominant at the Arnold as well, whereas Marius never won an Arnold title. Yeah. So yeah. when where I look at it is you take a sport like tennis, for instance where you have like, you know, Wimbledon on grass, you've got the clay court kind of competitions, you've got the hard court competitions. The best, best guys are the ones that can compete in everything. Yeah, I hear, I hear. Whereas you get some people that specialize in certain events. Marius was an incredible athlete, but when it came to the really heavy stuff, he wasn't quite as strong. And that's why I would rate someone like, like Zadrunas above him. But otherwise, you know, still... All of them, incredible athletes. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And on that topic, and that, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial, right? Go on. <laughs> Is that allowed on this show? Is that, yeah, um, say anything <laughs> you like, mate. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not involved anymore, so I can pretty much say whatever I want. Whatever yeah, I want. go for it. Um, you know, the, 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 the events and the sport does change a little bit, and obviously it more can suit different people. Of course. And I think part, part of that is, if you put yourself in a position where you have the importance, the events kind of naturally roll with you um does that make sense i'm trying to go i'm going to go into more detail but without I, being I, 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 I know what you're saying <laughs> if, you, if, if you if you come along and you start making big noise and doing big things but you're not quite the champion yet you can get yourself into a position where well, we want lawrence to be champion are you, are you trying to say that that promoters may favor events to to push certain athletes is that what you're trying to say Oli? You, no I'm, I'm definitely i'm definitely saying that <laughs> well, that, look, look, I mean, I, I had I had a conversation similar to this with Colin Bryce the other day, and yes, these type of things happen. But the way to counteract that, that is is what my suggestion would be. If uh, particularly, for, I mean, I I'll take myself as an example. I won Europe's Strongest Man against Hafthor, but Europe's Strongest Man that year was five events. 
Okay. They were some uh, two of the events were my absolute favorite events. So Yoke and Farmers Walk at the time, I believed I was the best in the world at. I went to that competition and I broke two world records. And then I've got three events where I just needed to place high enough. And yeah. they were good events for me, like Deadlift from Max is not a bad event. I mean, I could have picked yeah. better events still, but with those five events, I was always going to be hard to beat. And yeah. four made a mistake. So with five events, I slipped in there and I'm, uh, you know, I would never go around saying I was better than Thor because that's ridiculous. But on that night, it was my night. Just like you can have in in many sports, you know, like a a basketball team or a football team can beat a better team sometimes. And that's sport. Things like that happen in fighting. You can have a a, a puncher's chance, you know, know, you're against someone that's technically better. There's there's always a chance. And on that night, I was, I was, you know, I was the man. But if we took 10 events, it would have been a very different story because the, 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 the best athletes are so good across the board. Whereas in your prime, you could have picked five events where you would have done well against anyone. Yeah, I could yeah, pick yeah. five events where I could do well against anyone. But you put 10 events into a competition, there's nowhere to hide. The top yeah. guys will always come out to the top. And that's where I, I, I kind of argue the point for like guys like Brian Shaw, Half Thor, and Zadrunas. Because I, I class those three as the best three of all time to be honest Mm -hmm. any competition against anyone in the world they will still come out around the top whereas the rest of us who are great athletes can go up and down like yo-yos in the you know there's there's a whole list of maybe 20 guys that can all beat each other but those three will always come out near the top in every single contest yeah i think you're right i think you're right and that's why i think a contest like world's strongest man needs more events to really decide it's like I mean, how many events is in the final now? How many, how many events in the final? Well, last now? year was five events in the final. Really? That's not enough. That's not enough. It's not enough. I th- it used to be eight events, you know, back in the day. Of course, yeah. yeah. And eight, eight was great. Eight's perfect. I'd even like to see 10 and maybe get rid of the, the heats. Just have guys qualify through the other shows throughout the year. And then maybe 20 of the top guys in the world go head to head. A bit like the so, CrossFit so, Games. So, so I, 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 I kind of feel what you're saying. I mean... What you'd also create there is where you'd also create a little, a little bit more of the old privilege. I went to watch Strongest Man, yeah. As opposed to maybe too many people getting to watch Strongest Man. Yeah, I think when there's thirty guys, you always get a few guys that maybe don't deserve to be there. And yeah, they got the t-shirt. They didn't get. They didn't deserve, you, you don't get a t-shirt for nothing, do you? You don't get. You no. shouldn't get a t-shirt for free. I I, I agree. You know, you, you need like guys to. I mean, it's now it's, it gets harder and harder every year. The standard just keeps getting better. You know, we've always had good guys. There's always been like right from the start in the 70s, there was great guys. But now the, the whole pool of athletes is better. There's a lot of really good guys. Uh, whereas back then there was a handful, uh, you know, but there's still, there's always one or two that get to Worlds. That if in they're it. in your group, you're sort of happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. I mean, you know, and I don't want to be disrespectful to some of the British guys, but early on when we were sending five guys, we we had five guys that would go to Worlds and maybe four would come last in their group. Oh, we shouldn't have had five guys. We shouldn't have no. had five guys. We, we were privileged that, you know, it was aired on British TV and, and they wanted like British athletes. Whereas now, though, you send five British guys, they're all competitive. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't. I haven't seen the bad Brit emotion as man for a while. And I, no. I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't name one if it was, but. No, I mean, you, you really can't. That Every single Brit that goes to Worlds is competitive and fighting for, for a spot in that final. I mean, last year we had three guys in the final. Yeah, yeah. Was, well, um, I, I, I like to think that um, yourself and myself laid some of them foundations for, for that to be really close. Definitely, mate. I mean, I remember, was it, I can't remember if it was 2008 or 2009, there was you, me, I think Felix, Darren Sadler and Terry, and all five of us won the powerlifting event in our groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah, think, yeah, that was 2008, 2008, 2008, I think. Because it was 2008, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, you know, we, you and me probably had the squat, both won that, and I think the other three guys won the deadlift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's the same thing as well. So Some some guys, I've, I've never seen some guys deadlift, and I've never seen some guys squat, ever. Yeah, there's certain guys <laughs> that will always get the deadlift. So I shouldn't go there. I shouldn't go, I shouldn't go there. So I've just never well, seen I, it. I'd like to say I've had both. <laughs> oh, I've seen you do both. You can do both. You can do both. <laughs> no, they're, they're, yeah, I've, I guess I've seen that before. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, think, things are 
hopefully going to keep improving. I mean, a lot of it comes down to money and promotion. You know, there's there's not enough money to, to put some of these events on as well as they'd like to. So they're working in budgets. But the, the thing with Strongman now is it's grown away from just World's Strongest Man. There's other big shows that happen yeah, I know, throughout yeah, the world. Know. The Giants Live shows are brilliant. Um, the, the, the Wuss shows in Dubai are brilliant. You know, the Arnold competitions all around the world are fantastic. Glenn Ross, even, he, he puts on the UK Strongest Man and some of his own shows, and they're, they're really good in a different way. I, I really like some of his shows because he makes them more family orientated. His yeah. UK Strongest Man is, is like a real family experience if, if, if you ever go to it these days. I, so, I look back and wish I'd, done, wish I'd done a few of them, to be honest. And I look back, I think I wouldn't mind doing a few of you guys. I, I think I it's, it's hard sometimes. because you'll know, you'll know in the fighting game, you know, promoters want you to go to their contests. But unless you're getting a contract that's supporting you throughout the year, you need to be free to be able to compete in whatever you want. So yeah. I, 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 I try and stay, you know, pretty, pretty good terms with most of the promoters. Um, and if, if one of them turned around and gave me like a, you know, a nice figure, a you know, big contract to just compete in their shows, then I would. But that doesn't happen yeah. in Strongman. So yeah, you've got to have that freedom to, to kind of move about. And a little bit of competition is always good anyway. It's It makes things better for everyone. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to make each other better, aren't they? They're going to bounce with each other. If, if, if they start paying more, we have to pay more and yeah. so on and so forth. If you get like one that dominates, they get a bit of a, mono, a monopoly on it and yeah. they'll pay you less. But I think that's that's been the case before, hasn't it, previously? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all improving, you know. The, the sport, the popularity of the sport has, I mean, you know, you, 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 you I guess, left Strongman before it really got popular because, you know, we, we did some good shows and stuff. But I guess 2000, and, like Darren Sadler's a real man that's sort of driven it, you know, up. And you, I know you know Darren well. But yeah, when yeah, he got involved in promoting, he really started to see, he, he had a vision to make Strongman bigger and start putting it into arenas. And he started with Europe's Strongest yeah. Man at Headingley Arena. And then he moved to the first direct arena where yeah, yeah. 2016 Europe, there was 12,000 fans there. And now they're doing arena shows all over the world. It's, yes, it's, I, I've been to quite a few, Darren's brought me over, brought over to quite a few of them in the crowd. And I've, I've watched them. And I'm, I'm really happy to see a, a former competitor in, in the uh, director's chair, if you like. Because he understands where we're coming from and um, yeah. tries to look after us. He's, also, meti just... oh, he's man, meticulous sorry. as well. He, 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 you know, he he understands every little aspect that goes on, and he's got a great team that work for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he probably, uh, you know, as far as my people that I'm really good friends with in in, in, in Strongman, so now, obviously, me and yourself don't talk very much, but you 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 always a good buddy of mine. Um, me and Darren talk pretty regularly. We see to see each other here, and he comes to my fights sometimes, even overseas. Um, that, that, that little rivalry we had over the years. And it's, it's, yeah. a little, it's, it's a really funny story of how, of how, uh, how we became friends. Um, and uh, we've sort of held on to that now. It's, it's something that's quite, quite, uh, quite important to me. It's quite part, part, part of the memory because... Um, it's, it's funny because most, of the, guys that, most of the guys that come on talk about how the, the friendships and things like that are more important than the, than the, the competition. And yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's it's, it's funny that, and um, me, without going into too much, me and me and Darren, me and Darren hate each other. We met each other, <laughs> literally, literally, literally couldn't stand each other. Um, I think more from his his end than mine, <laughs> because um, because he'd been to British Strongest Man a year before me, so he was he was he was the new kid on the block. He was he, he was the, the talk of the town. Yeah, and I came along, and I wasn't that I wasn't that good, but it was still a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Them, them, them guys, like, we didn't even look at each other. We wouldn't even look at each other for a, for a good year. Is that because you were both, like, the up-and-coming youngsters? I guess so, yeah. I mean, that's how I see it, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't... He was more established than I was, so I'm guessing it was more from him. We laugh about it all the time now. You know? we, talk, we talk about it all the time now. And he, uh, we both... He, he openly admits he, he hated me, which is funny. <laughs> I'm quite hateable. But, um, so he, he basically didn't respect me up to the point where I earned it, like I said earlier on, you know? And... Um, well you have to earn that. that respect in this sport. There's no question about that. Yeah, no, you know, you had, you had him and uh, you had a little gang like him, Stumpy, Eddie, Eddie Old, Eddie Old, Eddie Old, Eddie's always been cool. Yeah. And it was a bit of a northern gang. It was quite, it was quite intimidating back then, you know. It was, um, it was just a, a strong bunch of guys that train together and help each other. They're going to help each other be better than you still. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's not that's, cool. It is. I think as we get older, we get more laid back anyway. When you're younger you're like, you're so hungry and you just want to prove yourself all the time. I think as you get older, you just, you just think, okay, I can just relax a bit more now. Like, you know, we're going to compete hard. There's no doubt about that. But I don't, you know, for years, I haven't stressed about competitions like I did when I was younger. Get, yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember when I was younger and I was needing to, you know, 
go take a piss about every 30 seconds before an event because I was nervous. Yeah, I, I, know, I know the same. I know the same feeling. <laughs> well, funny, funny, funny enough, that, that 2003, three, four, yeah, 2003, hang on, 2004, when I got to the final, I remember I got to the final and uh, we had a few days at Butlins or whatever it was before the final started. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, Oh, I bet Darren's at home stewing that I'm in the final. <laughs> it, was, it was glorious. It was glorious. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a win. It was a win. <laughs> that was part of my plan, a yearly plan of how I could irritate, <laughs> irritate Darren. And I was one year ahead. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That is funny. Anyway, you, you, won, you won Britain's 2006. Yeah, you went to Worlds in two thousand and eight and two thousand and nine, was it, or was it? I went to work the Ifsa Worlds two thousand and six. Yep, I couldn't go to World Strongest Man because of the uh, tracks and Contract, stuff. Yeah, two thousand and seven, I missed due to my my bicep tear, not yep. injured at the beginning of two thousand and seven, and then I came back to two thousand and eight. Um, did British Strongest Man? Uh, did we shared the heat that year? We we were in and, the same um, group, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, and then um, in the final three. To my, to, to my ability at the time, um, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Had a few few issues, but we all have issues. Don't want to go too much into that, but I wasn't quite myself. And didn't finish the competition. Had a lot of uh, problems with my arms. And uh, went to went to Worlds that year, and that was my last competition. Well, Worlds that year. Yeah. And um, decided to get into mixed martial arts. Yeah. Well, I went to, my whole my whole idea was was I'm going to win World Strongest Man. I'm going to be World Strongest Man. Yeah. Um, and it was it was before my bicep tear. I don't want to say I was on target, like I was definitely going to win World's Strongest Man, but I was where I thought I needed to be to make that progression. Yeah, and I was I was coming through. Um, but when I when I, I tore my bicep when I came back, there was a few events that I just couldn't train. I could do them in competition, but I couldn't train them. Yeah, one of them, one of them be at, at the stones. And at, at my best, I mean, we never saw we saw too much in competition. But at my best, I was throwing stones up really really fast in in, in the sets. Yeah. And uh, I got, when I went to World Strongest Man 2008 in West Virginia, I hadn't trained at the Stones since my injury in mm-hmm. 2007, beginning of 2007. So I, I just lifted individual stones, just, well, just really big ones, actually really heavy ones to be fair, pretty strong, but not the speed of the set. Yeah. And, uh, and whenever I did, it upset my arm. It upset my forearm and my arm. Yeah. And, so, and, and cleaning the log sometimes would, would upset me and stuff like this. And things that I was good at, like the log and the stones, and it really was harming. In World Strongest Man, I didn't do very well. I had a few on the squat, because you can always squat, right? You know, as, long, as long as your quad, quads are attached, you can squat. Yeah. Um, but on the way home, I realized that this, this is, this is a, for, my, uh, for my goal and for, for what I want. And uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a year ahead anymore. I lost a year, a year before, didn't I? So I was, yeah. back, I was, I was where, I, where I was supposed to be. But maybe I didn't have the the win in me that I, that I saw because I say because of the arm. Winning World Strongest Man is a is a is a lottery of luck, oh. skill, work. You, you, uh, you, need, you need luck. You need a lot of hard work and determination. You need to get. You need. I always said you need to get yourself within that kind of ability, and then you need some luck as well. It's yeah, exactly. As simple as that. I didn't, I didn't feel like everything was right, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it comes across. It's a, po- it's a positive or negative to my personality, but but once I feel like I can't win more strongest man, I'm not going to do it. I I totally understand that. I do. Um, um, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not proud to say that. To be fair, I'm not proud to say it. But it's just my personality. It's just who I am, and and you are we are what we are. I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I totally get it. I mean, you know, I, I've retired now, and people are like, oh, you should try and come back and and do a comp. I don't want to compete unless I can be my best. Yeah, not to go backward. You could be, be at uh, least what you I, were. Or... And I, I've I've suffered too many injuries to be my best. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I might be able to sort of make do and adapt and, and get there. Get, you know, get close. But the other guys, the younger guys now that are progressing in their twenties and you know they're hungry and they're fighting it and they don't have the same commitments elsewhere that I have. It's yeah. it's hard to know. I'm not the same person I was in my mid twenties yeah, when you're. No, you know, you, that's it's the only thing we focus on back then. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You know, I, I've, I like, like you, you needed a new challenge, and, and you've gone on to do really well. I mean, let's talk about this weekend because you just won a world title. Yeah, so um, I went to I went to Poland last weekend, um, and they, they offered me a, a title fight for the uh, FEN Fight Exclusive Night World Title, the vacant world title. 
Um, I only had three weeks notice for it. So obviously I haven't been training too much because of the yeah. COVID and, and the situation. So I've been running. I've been running, running and riding the bike. I've got an air bike indoors when it rains. I run when it's not raining. And uh, I'm still pretty committed to that. I'm still pretty dedicated. I'll, I'll do it. You know, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't lost that, that ability to, to, to do what I have to do, even when I don't want to do it. And uh, the opportunity came up three weeks ago. And, and the, my last fight was in November in Croatia. I had a fight. And against a, a really, really talented guy called Anthony Delia from uh, from Croatia, he's like the, he's trained under the tutelage of Mirko Krokop, um, a very famous fighter. Yeah, yeah. And he's like a, one of the big pro- world prospects of heavyweight. And I got the call on Thursday night, say, "Do you want to fight him in Croatia on, on Saturday?" And I said, "Well, what's the worst that can happen?" You know. And uh, I went out there. And I did. I didn't win. Anthony beat Anthony beat me. But it's one of them ones late notice that you don't lose much credibility because of this, the environment. Um, yeah. You, so it's quite it's quite low risk in a way because you can't lose too much. And, and I, if you're a, if you're a 21 year old fighter, I wouldn't take it because you're building up. But yeah. I'm further on the line, so it was worth a gamble. You have to gamble on yourself sometimes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so so that was two days notice. So I, after that, I said no, no more late notice fights because it's too it's too difficult, too too tough. And then three weeks ago, I got the call. I was like, yes, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> of course. Compared to two days, three weeks is great, right? Three weeks is brilliant. That's more than enough time, mate. <laughs> oh, I was exhausted. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of training. Hey, had you so, been doing? Had you been doing any training? We've obviously got the COVID situation, the lockdown. Had you been able? Only to do individual training? training. Only individual training. So just on training on your own, yeah. And I and uh, for the last three weeks, they said we can train. If you're professional, you can train with yeah. people. So I managed to find some training partners for the last few weeks, or two and a half weeks. Yeah. I went. I went out to Poland. For the title fight against the, it was a very good, well, well thought of one of their best guys. They got a really good record, twenty pro wins. And uh, I went out on my own without any any tournament or coaches. Normally, you bring your coaches with you. Yeah, you know, you've got a whole team with you when you when you're fighting. Yeah, but not, but 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 no one was going to want to come out there and then isolate for two weeks back when they get back here. Yeah, apart from me, because I'm, I'm I'm getting paid for the fight and it's my career. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't make enough money to pay someone ten thousand pounds to come out with me. So I didn't even bother people. I said, no, look, listen, I'll go out on my own. And I'll, I've got some friends in the show. They'll corner me. And, uh, yeah, we, we went out there. And uh, I, I knocked the guy out with a, with a clean right hand in 23 seconds, I believe. Awesome, mate. Well, congratulations. There's no, well, there's no, better, feeling. There's no better feeling. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, you, you just, it's, it's, it's much like when you do some, when you, when, when you like, maybe when you won Europe's Strongest Man, for example. Is it, um, yeah. is that, you've, done, you've got lots of titles, but I'm just trying to think of one of the, some of the best ones. You know what it's like. It feels amazing at the time, but the real good feeling is just how you feel about yourself for a, for for, the, for, the, for for a few weeks. You know, yeah. You just you just just content, just content. A piece of the world, right? It does. But did you not get like that kind of come down then? And you're like, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But you know, in the fight game, it's funny because you get a good win, and not only do you have your win, you know, or maybe have your belt, maybe if it's a title fight, maybe you have a bonus. You get some extra, could get paid maybe extra for winning. Yeah. Not only have you secured that extra funds and extra credibility, but you've also definitely secured the next opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So you've got also got some insurance. So as far as, especially if you're old, if you're a family man and stuff like this, and you know, at our age, you have more commitments. Yeah. You know, we have to consider these things as well. So it's a real relief. And it might, it might paint a bit of a I think there's, there's, there's no better feeling than kind of going back to your family and being able to provide for them doing something you love yeah yeah for sure for sure and I know and my kids to say to be told daddy one was is amazing and I mean I'm, I'm not I'm not big on um, mementos like uh, my trophy my belt I just tuck them away in the I tuck, tuck them away in the cupboard until next time I'm not I'm not, yeah. not fussed about that sort of stuff it's more about the memory isn't it it's more about yeah. what, what goes on definitely but, um, you know every, Whatever it says about human beings, everyone likes you when you're winning. Yeah, it is. And you're, you're forgotten quite quickly in, in, in these sports. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm got, still... got, I think it's really important that you just enjoy enjoy the experiences. Yeah, that for sure, for sure. And um, I'm still I'm still at a point. I mean, I don't know how you feel. I'm still I'm still at a point where I where I kind of I still I still need to feel it. Like, I mean, you've retired now. You've done so well. How do you feel now? Do you still do you still crave the, the idea of? I, I, I'm the kind of person that needs. That. I'm the kind of person that needs a goal, and what I've done is shifted my goal. So it's no longer winning good titles. Good man, yeah, man, I've got man, other man. goals now that I'm focused on, um, and that you know that replaces the void. But does it call it, you though? Sorry, does it still call you? 
Does that that need still call you? Uh, right now, no. But that's not to say six months down the line it won't. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I am prepared for that. I sure. just, I just, I'm, I'm keeping very busy right now. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I'm so, like like yourself. I'm such a competitive person that I, I know it'll happen. It'll be like I'll I'll be watching a show and you sat there and you're like, I can do that. I can do better than that. You know, I, and, and it's. I think as long as I can keep busy, keep focused on, on different goals, I'll be happy. And I think I'm at the point now where I, I'm, I've sat, I'm satisfied with what I've achieved. And I don't want to worry about trying to provide for my family by doing strongman. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to just enjoy my training, enjoy my work. And if I want to do a powerlifting comp or a strongman comp, you know, down the line, then I'll, I'll do it. But it's not... But, but without putting that kind of pressure that you've got to be the best and, you know, yeah. you know how hard we push ourselves and, you know, yeah. being a strong man, you're, you're, my, comp- my competition weight is up at like 160 plus, 160 yeah. kilos. Yeah. That's not healthy, you know. So no. right now I'm bringing my body weight down slowly. I'm kind of, you know, I want to get down under 140. And I mean, it's still big at 140, but me, I'm pretty fit at 140. I feel a lot fitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah. um, you know, everything feels good. So I just want to enjoy my time with the kids, enjoy not having that pressure of constantly thinking about the next contest because you know yourself it consumes us and it is you, you it's a selfish market. time you seem to be doing well with it to be fair because it's not easy it's not and it, at first it was hard but then once i sort of accepted it i was like okay this is great because then i can go to competitions and watch the other guys and i'm really happy for them whereas when you're in that competition mood it's like sod them i can beat that <laughs> oh no look no. oh, oh. I, I, I still I'll, I'll watch almost different sports and I'll, I'll watch anything and I think I think to myself in the right circumstances I can beat this guy. Yeah, <laughs> anything, that's, that's, that's just that natural competitiveness that any athlete has. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you, all of us when you're you're a very competitive person in nature and, and so, some people won't understand this at all, but for those out there that do compete and you know compete at a high level, they they will understand it. And it's, well, I always just I just quote people sometimes, and people think it sounds amazing. I said, no, it's not amazing. It's a painful experience. <laughs> it's a pain, well, so I have to I, accept I, it. You can't. I come from a very competitive family where my, my father and my brother were both very competitive, uh, to the point of we'd compete over everything. Like just you'll be playing like a board game or something like that, and it becomes so competitive that it, it can be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I'm glad I wasn't there with you. I'm glad I wasn't there with you in that ball game because it would have gone, <laughs> <would've> gone, <laughs> gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've competed against each other a number of times, and it, you know, you 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 you're a very competitive. I'll you, Lars, because because I, I sort of I sort of managed to to sort of see see you on the ride as I just got out of the game. Yeah. I ran away from you at the end. <laughs> well, it was it was yourself and Felix and and Terry really that sort of inspired me to keep pushing. So oh, I, Felix keeps inspiring, isn't he? Felix, Felix I, 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 had a, I had Felix on the other day and, and Felix is, I mean, you know Felix, he's just a, a lovely, lovely person, genuinely amazing human being. And I, I don't understand how he's still motivated to keep doing it, but he is, he loves being active and you can just tell he still enjoys it. And I really, I really respect that about him, but I just can't do that myself. I can't. How many years of, is he in now? How many years in is he? He's about 54 now. But how many years is he in, is he in, is he in strong man He now? started the same time as you, didn't he? Roughly, I think it was a year after. I think it might have been a year after. So you, you know, that's so, two, since two thousand and three, I think, or two thousand and two, he's been involved. Yeah, in yeah, that's, inc- that's incredible. That's incredible. It's it's a hell of a career, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. And he, he's he's just as active as ever. He just keeps active. He keeps doing it. But Fe- Felix doesn't seem to get so upset if he has a bad result. You know, he he can cope with it. He'll come back, and every time you think Felix is on his way out, he'll come and have an amazing performance. Yeah, me, 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 me and Mark have had a, had a quite interesting sort of start in, in, in how, how we work with each other because we'd often run together. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not always loads of money, so they usually share a room, and certainly used to in the IFSA competition. And um, we'd often run together, but Mark was just getting in, and believe it or not, it's hard to see now, but he was competitive, but more of a quiet, more of a quiet competitive. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's still a very competitive <laughs> man. You know, Mark, is, I was talking to him the other day about his, his grip records, and he still wants to beat them. There's, there's yeah, no yeah. question about that. <laughs> And, uh, but he was more—he was more talkative for me back then, and, and he—he—he he, would—I don't—I don't know. If, uh, listen, Mark's, Mark's, Mark's a great pal of mine. Um, I always love catching up with Mark. Yes. When I see Mark at competition, now he's—he's he's probably more than anyone else. The guy comes over, and gives me a hug, really happy to see me, and I'm—I'm I'm in. 
So it's really, it's, it's really nice in, on the rare occasion I do see him. But um, when we first started sharing a room together, he, I, I, was, I was younger and I was more charged up for this competition. And he'd, he'd say certain things and he, he, really, he used to get to me. He used to get to me. <laughs> like, I liked him, but he used to piss me off. He used to piss me off. <laughs> but that's, he, that's that competitiveness, 100%. It is. It is. But, I, but now I, I look back now, at the time I thought, this guy's this guy crazy. But now I think, now I think, I think he was really smart. I think he was really smart. <laughs> he was getting he really, in your head. <laughs> he was. He was getting in my head. And he did, he did get in my head really well. I, 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 <laughs> you know, the best relationships, they sort of get better with time. Yeah. And you start start appreciating these funny these funny um, quirky things about people. Yeah, and um, and definitely the same with me and Mark. Now we you know we, we we over time. You know, we once once someone's beaten you five times and you beat them five times, you both think, no, he's pretty good, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's and that's that's my relationship, I guess, with guys like Felix and you know uh, Terry. I've competed against those guys more than anyone, and I, I you know if someone gave us a head to head, I don't know what it would be we've beat, we've all beaten each other loads of times so you, you sort of you earn that respect over the years and you know yeah. we've we've all three of us that you're always going to have a good battle but who would you say your your if you wanted to look back on your career who would you say that your rival was <laughs> there, there was a big rival made out of me and terry you know uh, colin bryce made that rivalry because we to be fair we were the top two british guys for a number of years um, so people are always going to, you know, you probably had it with Terry on the up where you were like number one and, and he was coming up it's and then yeah, yeah, it's you went out, Terry was the man. And then I started to sort of catch him up and start beating him. And, you know, because we were the top two British guys, we competed against each other more times than I'd compete against anyone else. Cause you're in the same comps all the time. But like I said to him, it was never about him against me. I wanted to beat everyone. Every single, you know, guy in that contest, I wanted to beat them. That was my yeah, attitude. Yeah. And the fact that he's getting mentioned just means that he's the, he's, he's the genuine threat and no one else is. Yeah, so that's a compliment exactly. in a way. And then the commentators and the fans sort of build something up between people. But but to me, it was just, I want to beat everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, that, was, that was the goal. Yeah. I wanted to win. And, and like yeah, with yeah. yourself, when I was younger, I was so driven on being the best that I could be. Whereas... Now I'm just a lot more laid back about it all, and that's that's fine. I've lost that spark, and it's time to to sort of step back and, and watch these youngsters that do have that drive take it on. Because we yeah, have yeah. some. I mean, I don't know if you watch much Strongman now, but we have some impressive youngsters in this country right now. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I probably I don't watch as much as you probably lose because I'm obviously obviously in a lot of different places as well with what with what I'm doing. But I do. I am very impressed with. Um, Five or six guys I'm aware of right now in the UK that, are, that all look like they could uh, could hit the podium at some point or more. Yeah, there, there's there's a whole bunch of them, and there's there's go, there's guys coming through that people don't even know about as well. That give them I'm a sure. year or two, they're going to be very impressive. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's it's nice that guys like yourself and me can could ins, could inspire these guys to 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 want to do this sport. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it certainly is, and it's um it's it's nice to. Uh, See the sport getting the recognition here, because in, in in turn you get you get your own sort of uh, your own bit of recognition, if you like, which is which is nice. Definitely. So before I let you go, you obviously know about this big strongman fight that's happening. I do, yeah. Um, Hafthor Bjornsson against Eddie Hall. Yeah. I wanted to get your take on that because you're a man that's gone from strongman into the fight game. I mean, Thor is talking about coming back to or still doing strongman. He's, he's training for Iceland's strongest man at the time. Do you think if he's going to do this, he needs to commit 100% to fighting or can he do both at the same time? What's the time scale for Iceland's Strongest Man? Curiosity. So Iceland's Strongest Man's in a few weeks or a month or so like that and, and the, um, the fight isn't until next September. So it's a good amount of time to train. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think time scale wise, both events are okay because of he's probably, I'd imagine he's probably a good clean winner in Iceland, usually, usually. You know, he, he's I got. He, I mean, he, he dominates most shows. He does. Never mind Iceland's strongest man. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I think he's got obviously more considerable lead there. Yeah. Um, so I don't, if if he was going to try and be a professional fighter and a professional strongman, then it wouldn't happen. No, it wouldn't happen. When I started training for fighting and retired from strongman, soon after, a friend of mine. I used to go to Ukraine quite a lot for competitions. It's quite popular over there. Yeah. Uh, my friends over there, Vasil, them guys, Elena Kiva. Um, they're all, friend, all friends of mine. And I, I, I always enjoyed going to Kiev. And she asked me if I would come over and do the World Lawless Championships. I think it might have been March, and I'll be doing the fighting. I had one fight already. 
and I, I was just, and I, I said, I said, I said no, and then she kept on coming back and really sort of tugged on my sort of ego, ego strings, if you like, <laughs> about how much you want me over there. And me being me, I said, oh, okay, okay, I'll give it a go. So I thought, you know what, it hasn't been that long. I'll just chuck, chuck the log off a few times. And uh, everything had changed. Everything had changed. <laughs> everything had changed. Um, I, I actually injured myself on my arm doing log lifts as well, which made me, I had to pull out of an injury. But trying to combine even just log lift training with MMA training um, is so different and so um, taxing in different ways yeah. that you can't train for both. You could you, not effectively. I mean, in reality, for the boxing fight, four could train for do some technical boxing work, still train for strongman. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be uh, a Floyd Mayweather-esque. What, what, um, I'll ask you another thing. What, what do you reckon both guys will be like stepping in the ring for the first time? Because, I mean, their, their fight's going to be built up to, to be a big fight. There's going to be a big crowd. You know, there's a lot of money on the, on the stakes. They, they, they really don't like each other. I, I, I know, because, I mean, I used to be, I was British champion at Kung Fu. I don't know if you know or not. Um, so I've got a bit of a fighting background. And I understand you can be as fit as you like, but when you go on to that, that that ring or, or that stage there's a lot of adrenaline involved yeah drain your your cardio very very quickly do you yeah, think do you totally think we're right. going to see a good boxing match or is it just going to be a slugfest you know what i think we're going to see a great spectacle yeah no we're going to see a great boxing match no um i don't think it's going to be loads of energy in the latter parts of the fight I don't think these guys need loads of energy to hurt somebody either because um, oh, they're they're monsters, aren't they? <laughs> the body weight alone will be um, will be phenomenal. Um, I think I think Eddie will be. I think Eddie's Eddie's a Eddie's a champion that can pest to the to the to the fullest I could yeah. describe. So he's not going to go into it. When, he's not going to want to lose this. He's not going to come in there and prepare his ass off to 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 give four a lot of trouble. Um, and obviously, four's got certain advantages. But he's also more ingrained in the strongman still, and more maybe maybe, maybe sidetracked. I'm not saying he is, but I'm no, possibly. I mean, it's, it's, I guess, like you say, they've got a year to to really focus on it. Um, Eddie looks very focused. He he looks like I mean, he's you know employing people to live with him to really? during his training camp. He's he's taking it very seriously. He's got no distractions in terms of competing in strongman. Um, he's secure. He's secure. He has a secure sort of lifestyle. Yeah, uh, and you know, obviously, Thor can make some tremendous progress in a year as well if he focuses on a hundred, you know, a hundred percent. I, from my personal perspective, I think it's going to be a great build-up to the show. I think that's going to be entertaining, and you know, I'm glad they're fighting each other and not trying to become professional boxers because I think going in against a pro boxer would be stupid. No, it wouldn't but, work. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're not pros. They're they're two guys that are taking an opportunity that's been given to them. Uh, I don't know if you saw that boxing match between the two YouTube guys. Uh, I tried not to, but I did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch it, but I, I saw like a bit of the highlights. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah, you know, if these guys can make some money, fair play to them. That's... You know, it, it, I, I know I've, I've read quite a bit of sort of negativity about that before it happened from some, not from everyone, from some people. Um, I don't feel that way. I feel like, first of all, it's a testament to how far we've come. Second of all, I see two guys who have reached the top of the game to, to, their, own, to their own degrees and are going to have another opportunity to make them some money, get a great stage. I, I, um, I agree 100%. I just I hope it doesn't negatively impact strongman. That's all I hope. Because obviously, I mean, I, I, I care deeply about the strongman sport and I, I don't think it will. You know, it's... Um, the, look, at, look, look at it like a strong, strong man going on Big Brother or I'm a celebrity, you know. Yeah. We're, getting, we're, getting, we're getting out there. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. There's, there's so many more fans in strongman and, and to be honest, those two guys are the reason why. So whatever we think, whatever people think, they have increased the following of strongman um, yeah. and they've brought more money into it and they're, they're providing for their family. So I can't sure. knock them for that. If, I'm sure if no. you've got a million dollar contract, you'd be signing up straight away. I know I would. Oh, listen, listen uh, you, know, you know what I think the, the card needs? It needs a good strongman slash fighter somewhere on the card also. Yeah, I, rec I reckon it does, you know, and a, and a really good commentator as well. But, <laughs> oh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it'll be fun. To, I'll, I'll go out there regardless and watch it. I think it'll be a great spectacle, like you say. But, Ollie, it's been a pleasure to have you on, my friend. 
Yeah, great um, it's been a long time, you know. We were, we were good friends during the strong yeah. round. Um, mate, it doesn't it doesn't change, mate. It's just uh, just different directions. Yeah, definitely, mate. It's been great to catch up. If people want to sort of catch your fights and follow you on an, um, on uh, social media, is there anywhere they can? Yeah, you've got um, Ollie Thompson underscore fit F Y T fit. Um, that's my Twitter, my Instagram. My, my Twitter's pretty much dead now, but I've been on it once in a while. My Instagram, Ollie Thompson MMA on Facebook. Check it out. I'm always um, updating my training and um, and just basically it's all it's all it's all sports and business. So no, no personal stuff to worry about. There, it's just uh, just <laughs> uh, just training methods, just, hard work, just, and just a knockout. Quickly, have you got any plans coming up fight wise? Well, now I've won that title. The offers have obviously increased because everyone wants to get get a piece of the uh, the form. If you like, when you're on form, you're popular. So I've got some great offers coming in and it puts me in a good position because I can be a bit more picky about what I do and don't, don't pick. So it won't be a two weeks or two days. It's going to be a proper training camp one. this time. Because I've got, I've got a belt now. I want to keep hold of it. Maybe I'll add, a, add a couple more. So um, not yet, Lars, but I'm hoping for maybe sign for August. Awesome, buddy. Well, best of luck with that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the chat with Ollie. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel and we will see you with more interviews soon.